All right, so real quickly, what is the vertex of this graph? 2, 1. And if you give me this on a piece of paper, why am I going to circle that for a partial credit? It needs parentheses, right? It's an ordered pair. It's a point. Give it the embellishment that it deserves, right? The parentheses. Um, the axis of symmetry, what would you tell me if I said, what's the axis of symmetry here? X equals, X equals 2. Very good. If you give me just this, what am I going to do? Circle it, right? X, because that's just a 2. X equals 2 means it is this imaginary line where every value is X equals 2, and it's called the axis of symmetry because it breaks up this graph into two symmetrical pieces. So that's some, uh, that's going to just lead us into our um, lesson for today. Let me get you your note sheet. The first thing that I want to do on your notes is actually add something. So this whole top left corner of your notes where you have blank space, we're going to do a few things there, all right? The first thing is we're just sort of going to review our, ba our basic parent functions that we talked about yesterday on your booklet. For example, what name did we call this function? Do you remember? Identity, right? Because this is y equals x. No matter what you put in for x, you're going to get the same thing back for y. That's why it's called identity. Um, these are going to be these are going to be out of order from your booklet, but they're in a specific order for another reason. What is what did we call this one? It's a quadratic. Your notebook calls it square. I would take quadratic. Either one. Um, and this one that looks like a V, what's that one? Absolute. Absolute value, right? Something that these two graphs have in common, bless you, is just like on our warm-up, they both have this special point here where the graph changes direction. And in these two cases, that special point is called a vertex. So that's a little bit of vocabulary we're talking about today. And what was the second thing we talked about in the warm-up? Axis of symmetry. These both also have that. It's just an imaginary line that goes through the vertex and splits the graph into two symmetrical pieces. And that's the axis of symmetry, not an axis of evil. Um, the next two graphs we're going to talk about are the cube graphs. We, we, bless you, we had cubic, we had cube root, and they have a special point as well, but it's not called a vertex. So this one is, which one is this, cubic or cube root? Cubic. The one on its, that looks like it's on its side, that's the cube root. And they both have this point right here where they, their beha the behavior of the graph changes. And we're going to call that an inflection point, right, for those two. Thank you. And then what graph haven't I talked about yet? Square root. So this one also has a special point, but it's not a vertex. It's not an inflection point. It's the beginning of the graph, where the graph begins. Uh, your homework and notes are going to call that an initial point. So the notes and homework for today is just looking at graphs of transformations um, and identifying certain characteristics of them, like their vertex or their axis of symmetry or their initial point, intercepts, all these kinds of things. And these are graphs of transformations. We won't actually do any transformations until tomorrow. And we're not even actually going to talk about how, what transformations occurred today. We're just going to look at the transformed graphs and read stuff off. I think we need this up anymore. Oh, I forgot. I was going to show you this. Oh, you might feel okay. All right, so in this problem right here, we have a transformed function. What's the parent 
function, the original function for this? Square, right? So part A is asking us for, so by the way, this problem asks for a thousand things, so be careful that when you go to your homework, you're reading it carefully so you know what each piece is asking you. A is only asking us for the function family, and it's square, or quadratic, whatever you want to call it. Um, part B, describe or identify the end behavior. We said that it was down, down, just like the Led Zeppelin song. The vertex is what here? Notice the lines are skipping by two. So what would you say the vertex is? One, nine, absolutely. Okay, the vertex is right here. Um, the axis of symmetry always goes through the X coordinate of the vertex. So what is the axis of symmetry? X equals one, right? Not just one, but X equals one. The X intercepts are where the graph, the blue thing, crosses the X axis. And how many places does it do that? Two places, here and here. What's, what are the coordinates for this left intercept? Negative two, zero. Please don't give me just negative two. Okay, I want you to write them as points. So the x-intercept is negative 2, 0, and the right-intercept is 4, 0. Now the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis, but here's something that people do a lot, especially in this particular shape. They'll say, oh, I already found that. It's 1, 9, because they feel like they did that work. But that is not your y-intercept. This is the y-intercept, where the graph crosses the y-axis. And what are the coordinates there? 0, 8. Okay. So the x-intercept always has y's for zero, uh, zeros in the y-spot, and y-intercept always has 0 in the x-spot. Um, and then the last thing for C is the domain and range. What's the domain here, assuming these are arrows? Negative infinity to positive. And the range is the bottom boundary to the top boundary. What's the bottom boundary? And the top boundary? Nine. nine. With a bracket or a parenthesis on nine? Bracket. Because it's a solid dot up there. Okay, it's an included value. So this is basically your entire homework. It's just that depending on the shape of the graph, it might not be asking you for the vertex and the axis of symmetry. For example, an absolute value graph would be asking you for, um, no, not absolute value. So like for a square root, it would be asking for the initial point instead of asking you for those things, all right? So what I want you to do real quickly before I release you to your own devices, literally and figuratively, is this problem, okay? So do A, B, and C for this one. What is this parent function? Square root, right? It's just been moved around and, and reflected. So take a minute and do that, and then we'll talk about it and then I'll give you your homework. So we said this function family was square root. And then B, describe the identify, describe or identify the end behavior. What's the left end behavior? It does not exist, right? So D and E for the left and the right end down. Um, this asks for an initial point because it doesn't have a vertex. Yes, sir. Yes, because otherwise you're not telling me anything about the left side. Like if it was just blank, for example. Yeah, I would count. That's okay. um, the initial point, what are the coordinates for the initial point? Negative 4, 2 with parentheses and a comma, the whole treatment. Um, X and Y intercepts, how many X intercepts are on this graph? One right here, that is negative three, zero. How many Y intercepts are there? One as well, right here, zero, negative two. And then just domain and range. So the domain is all the x values that work. So you want the left boundary and the right boundary. What's the left boundary point? 
negative 4 in the right. Thank you, V and to infinity. And does negative 4 get a parenthesis or a bracket? Bracket, absolutely. What, what would have to be different over here for me to give it a parenthesis? An open circle, right? That's the domain. And the range is the bottom boundary to the top. So that would be what? To 2. One thing in a situation like this, bracket, thank you, with the range where it's negative infinity up to 2, here's a mistake a lot of students give me because they just want to write the number down first. So I get a lot of this, which is wrong, 2 to negative infinity, right? Because they just want to get that number down. They feel like the number should go down and the infinity should be on the right. But what's wrong with this order is that it's not smallest to greatest. It's not bottom to top. So be careful about that. Any questions? All right, we're done. I'll give you your homework. The key will be in the back.